everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Zian Diesel and today I'm showing you how to do the pattern of cuff that you'll be able to add to your favorite sweater. Before starting the pattern, I'm going to show you the three style I propose you today. So I have the one with the horizontal slit. I have the one that is just a cut at the bottom. It looks a bit like the shirt opening. And you have the more traditional vertical slit. I will show you also how to do the bottom of the sleeve or the glove. That style that hold with one finger. Now to save time and be more accurate, I'm going to work on half the pattern. So I fold my sleeve and I took another piece of paper for my cuff. I fold the paper in the middle and I'm going to fold it the other way also. The reason is that I want both sides to be the same and also outside and inside exactly the same. From the bottom fold, I'm going to put my measurement at two place and trace the line. For the bottom measure, I suggest you measure what you want under the thumb. Here I need more or less 20 centimeter or let's say 7 inches and 3 quarter. Then we're going to place a half of that measure on the bottom line from the center of the sleeve. Then you're going to trace a line square with the bottom, pretty much half of the distance from the bottom to the line. Then you're going to measure the wrist on your sleeve. Remember to measure the inside line if your seam allowance are already included like me. And we're going to place that measurement on the top line. Now we're going to connect the wrist measure with the measurement that we need for the bottom. You're going to connect them with a stretch S shape. If we don't do nothing, we keep wrist and bottom even. The sleeve is going to fall a little longer on the side of your end. So I'm going to do the correction right away. So I'm going to remove to the land more or less seven millimeter or a quarter inch. Here again, we're going to connect the two level with a stretch S shape. I would say from pretty much half the line to this new point. The beginning of the opening pretty much at 3 cm from the wrist. Here I did an opening of 5 cm. That's going to leave me a 2 cm for the under thumb. Now we could put the seam value. Usually for knit it's 7 mm or a little more than a quarter inch. Then you just need to cut we need notches for the thumb opening, one on top, one at the bottom. Now to control where the thumb opening is going to be, move away from the underarm seam. You have a choice to put notch on your cuff itself, matching the underarm seam, or to place a notch on the sleeve at the first quarter. And that's what I decide to do. So I'm going to put a notch at the half of my half sleeve. I only need to add the grain line that will be exactly the same direction as my sleeve. And both pieces are going to be cut one pair. The variation of this pattern is the pattern where you have one layer and you hem the bottom. Now if you look at this one, it's as beautiful as the first one. And to do this one, you could just use the same pattern just fold it at the notch for the under thumb. Now if you cut your piece like that, you have exactly the value that you need for a hem at the bottom. Now to keep the same fit as my first sleeve bottom and add another piece, I'm going to have to remove the value to the main piece. And the measurement that I used for this piece is about 5 cm or 2 inches. Now my pattern is fold, so I'm going to do half the measurement. That means 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter on each side, and I'm just going to mark it. Now to trace the piece, you're just going to move the block until your reference are on the fold of the paper. And you're going to trace, but don't trace the notches, just indicate the bottom of the cuff, the fold line. So we did the larger piece, 
Now we're going to do the middle one. We know already it's going to be five centimeter or two inches wide plus seam allowance. There is two pieces. The first one is more or less 3.5 centimeter or an inch and three eight, and the rest will be for the longer piece. You also need to calculate that they do overlap more or less a quarter inch or five millimeter. So from the bottom reference that I have, I'm going to measure 3.5 centimeter or one and three eighth of an inch. The rest would be the top part. It has to be a little longer so it overlaps. So from the top, I'm going to go down from that line five millimeter or one quarter inch and trace another line. Now I'll continue to work in half. So I have my big piece that is right here. I'm going to do my small piece also fold in half. So I took my paper, I fold it, and I'm going to fold it in the other direction also. We know the width of that little piece. It's five centimeter, but since I'm working in half, I'm going to trace one inch or 2.5 centimeter. Right away, I'm going to add my seam allowance. Now I'm going to take the length I need for the top piece. I'm going to do it from the plan. So I'll place it just like that. Take the length that I need and just trace square. The top part already had the seam allowance. The bottom is on fold. So the only seam that I need is right there. Now I will do the same thing again for the small piece. So I'm going to fold the land and the other way. I kept the fold line at the bottom so it's clean and I have the little seam under the thumb. So I'm going to place my paper the same way. Bottom fold and I have another fold right here because I'm still working in a half. I'm going to place my width one inch or 2.5 centimeter plus the seam. Now I'm going to take the length, I place it at the bottom and I indicate the top line. Now from that line, this is the overlap. I'm going to need to add a seam allowance just like I show you where I hide my little seam allowance. So from that level, I'm going to go up a seam allowance value. Then I cut my tiny pattern piece. Then I cut the large piece. I would suggest you do put a notch at the bottom line on both sides. Same thing on the tiny little piece, bottom line on both sides. Now we have the second style finish. Now the third style. This one, as you could see, it's not a separate cuff. I just elongate my sleeve itself. I did a cuff, but under the thumb, it has a nice little bias or colored finishing around the thumb. So for this one, I'm going to trace completely my sleeve and fold in the middle. The opening for the thumb is on the first quarter, on the front side. We will add the length that we need. I did a rib at the bottom, so we only have to reach from the wrist to the under thumb. I would say more or less eight centimeter. That would be three inch and one eight. Indicate the measurement two different place and trace. The beginning of the opening is more or less three centimeter or an inch and one eighth below the wrist. I kept my reference the first quarter on the front, so I'm just going to trace square towards the bottom. To trace the bottom part, I suggest you use the pattern you did before so you have the right measurement already and you also have the shape. So just place it over the fold on the fold and maybe overlap at the wrist. Just trace to get the shape and the width. Then I just have to fix this little part. We could cut all around the sleeve. Don't forget to open your paper to cut the top part that is different on both sides. Now that line from the three centimeter down, trace little line on each side 
at 3 millimeter or 1 eighth of an inch. Then you're going to cut on this line, going round until the middle, round again until that line. Now for the little cuff, here I did more or less three centimeter or an inch. Now we're going to take a piece of paper for that rib piece, fold it in the middle, we'll work in half again because it's going to be a simple rectangle piece. I'm going to fold the sleeve, place the pattern right over fold line on top of the fold line, indicate the width at the bottom, then remove from that measure more or less a centimeter or three-eighths of an inch. Just to make sure that that cuff is going to stretch a bit when you're going to assemble it. I told you that that was three centimeter, it's double, and you need the seam value. So twice the value plus the seam allowance. Of course, you also need the little collarette over here. If you must do the pattern, it would be twice the length, and the width that I use here is 3.5 centimeter wide. For this one, it would be 12 by 3.5. I'm finishing today's explanation with this uh, cute sleeve bottom or a glove detail. For this one, I'm just we're going to use the style we just did, the number three with the opening elongation right on the sleeve. And I'm just going to give you those few measures so you could make the pattern. So I'm going to retrace. Just to make sure there's no confusion, I trace the inside line. That's my real wrist line. The length inside the hand is about three centimeter. So I'm going to indicate my three centimeter under the wrist where you have the seam. And for the point, we add another five centimeter or two inches. Then just remember to keep it a little 90 degree, add the underarm seam and just trace your point. And the point should get deeper pretty much for, from the first quarter in the front to the first quarter in the back. So that would be your reference right in the middle. Then I cut right away without seam allowance. So you could look this time, you see it's right in the middle. The point is on the grain line of the sleeve. Now you're missing the length of the strap. You have to continue sewing before to come back. So you're starting at the underarm seam. You're sewing until the end of the point. Then coming out, you continue sewing for pretty much 13 centimeter or something like five inch. Then you're going to put back the point inside the folder and continue until the other underarm seam. There you go, you have your four different sleeve bottom. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I see you soon.